Come on. There was a black ladybird on my windowsill and I tried to turn it over. <gasps> it's alive! Hey guys, welcome to my new series of tutorial videos. I'm going to be giving you guys a tip, hopefully every week. Um, I'm basically going to be giving you little hacks that are going to make your lives like 20 times easier. Mainly technology and technique based. So getting straight to it, today I'm giving you five little hacks that are going to make like the fluidity is going to make your life so much easier and quicker on logic. Little tricks that I've learned over the last year, I've learned from other people and just using logic like all the time. So number one, I think this was introduced um, ages ago on Logic, probably like Logic 8. It's the loop feature. If you hit the button C, you will see like a little yellow bar that comes up at the top of your screen. That is your loop section. Once you've selected that area and you've hit R and you're recording, it will record in that loop. I find this particularly helpful when I'm recording vocals, that's when I use it the most. The main reason I use this is because I was getting fed up of hitting stop and you just lose all flow of playing and performing. So I like to set a loop, hit record, it will just keep circling and circling and circling through that loop. Once I've done three or four takes without stopping, I usually have one in there that I really like and I haven't lost my zone. That was really bad. This leads me into my second point, comping. So comping is when you have, let's say, two different takes and you want the first bit of the first take and the second half of the second take and you kind of cut them and put them together. That's known as comping in the industry. Another reason why I love using the loop feature is you can drag across the sections that you really want to keep and it will automatically crossfade them and you're good to go straight from there. So that's another massive benefit of using the loop. This still works when you're not using the loop, so if you're doing full takes all the way through a song, you can still use the same comping technique. Thank you so much, best brother ever. My third very simple but very useful technique, I think I use this one the most, is the shortcuts to the tools. These are like having the left and right click on your mouse. If you're using a Mac and you've got a trackpad, it will be a single click will be the one on the left hand side and then if you hold and if you hold command, it will be the one on the right hand side. The shortcut to set these, if you hit T, it brings you the list of your tools. You can choose which tool to use without even having to like click here and drag down. It's just a little bit long. So I find using this shortcut and using these two tools incredibly useful. Nine times out of 10, I'll use the fade tool on the right hand side so I can hold command, drag a fade, and then I'll hit T for the cut tool. And then my main mouse then becomes the cut tool if I'm trimming up clips. It takes a bit of getting used to, but when you've learned what all the tools are, it's like super, super, super easy and super quick. Highly recommend that one. Wow, we are flying through these. So my fourth tip, I used to use automation for the volume up and down, and it used to take me ages to draw in exactly where I wanted it. And when I was just wanting everything to be like a rough, similar level, it was a bit of a long process. I was watching over the shoulder of a producer I was working with, as I, as I love to do it, I think it's the best way to learn. I was watching over her shoulder and she would cut little sections and use the gain tool in the information bar on the left hand side and she'd drag it up and down and visually she could just match the volume to the rest of the audio. This effectively does the same job as automation but without having to draw all the other lines but permanently then your file just will have the volumes that you want them to be and you can visually see all your files whereas on automation if you don't have the automation button selected you have to click on it to be able to see where your automation is and it's it's all a bit more confusing. Also this will use up so much less of your computer CPU which is how much your computer is having to deal with. So if you're running on a slightly slower computer, this also might help with your project rather than having a ton of automation across all your tracks. Sorry if I'm talking too quickly. I know I know time is precious for you guys. I just want to get all this out to you as quick as possible so you guys can go and create and use some of these. So finally, this this trick I think has saved me the, the most time out of anything. Quantizing audio. So quantizing is when the computer will automatically align everything to your grid. Predominantly used with MIDI, but it is also used with audio. I've always found it a particularly long, I still can't say it. 
I've always found it a particularly long process to use the flex tool in Logic and then drag everything in line. And sometimes it doesn't recognize peaks in the audio. It's, it's frustrating and it's a really long process. I was writing with a guy the other day and I did this and he was like, whoa, what have you done there? So if you go onto flex tool and you select automatic or rhythmic, whatever you would like, Logic will automatically show you where all the peaks are and what it presumes to be a chord or a beat. Once you have all this selected, you simply go into your information bar on the top left and you will see quantize. I never knew that that quantize was for audio. It's not for MIDI, that's for audio. Click on that, select your bars. I usually use one in 16. And as you can see, it will drag everything perfectly onto the beat. When some of the audio goes white, that means it's been shifted. If it stays the usual color, that means that means you played it spot on and it hasn't, hasn't changed anything at all. Be careful when you're using this technique though, because I often find that on lead vocals, for example, it sounds quite artificial. Um, I tend to use it a lot on backing vocals. It makes them really sharp. Or if you're using a couple of guitar takes at once, I find that really useful as well. So maybe don't use it on your lead instruments, things that are really sort of in your face and, and obvious if you were going to affect them in any way. But use tastefully, I think it's a super useful tool. So there we go. I hope those hacks were super useful for you guys. I hope they will speed everything up for you. If you end up using some of these techniques, definitely come back to this video. Leave a comment on which one you found most useful. If there's anything you'd like me to explain more, tweet me or DM me on Instagram. The links are both here and I will happily answer it and elaborate. Until next time, remember to subscribe. Remember to hit that little bell notification. I will see you next Tuesday for another really fun video. If you haven't seen my One Piano 15 Netflix theme tunes video, I will link it right here at the end of this video. Until next time, look after each other, stay safe, and remember, never stop creating. See ya!